Hey guys, Banana Luck here and back with another Watch of Realms video. So uh, once again, I'm on holiday so pardon the sound quality because the audio in-game sound is uh, uncontrollable on the iPhone recording function and it might be a bit loud for some of you guys but we're just gonna get straight to it. Tomorrow's gonna be a big day for us because we are gonna summon on the hex banner that's coming up. But I want to talk about whether or not you guys should be summoning uh, depending on where you are at the game. So first hero that I want to talk about is actually just Fursi. So on this 15x we have both Fursi and Hex and if you do not already have your first copy of Fursi, you have to summon on this banner because Fursi, like Elowin, is an essential bit for Cube Boss 2. You're gonna see on all the Guild Boss rankings on Samurai 2, you're gonna see first C on every one of it. Maybe a couple you see like Alien like over here, but most of the other folks you're gonna be seeing them uh, using first C in their lineup most of the time, just for the reason that she has this uh, very strong skill for Samurai particularly, and that's Sand Aegis, which provides 25% AOE reduction in terms of AoE damage, which is majority of the damage that Samurai is actually dishing out. So that's the reason that you have to go for her, and yeah, there's really not much else that I can say to that. Obviously, first he's going to be great for the Wasteland Titan Codex as well, because it's all AoE damage there, but first he is so strong in Samurai 2, and if you just look at his range, right below his BP over here, you can see that it's actually the Vortex range, which allows him to be able to cover all the heroes in your samurai lineups no matter whether you're using teams with more melee units or teams with more platform units so we'll just get that out of the way if you don't have first C, go for him you need at least one copy but his awakenings are not great so i would not go for them now let's talk about hex instead so hex is an amazing unit we can just bounce right here over to Samra, uh, sorry, guild boss 1 you're gonna see that I run an A2 hex I have a I have only Lunera as lot and I'm doing almost like 100, almost 200 million and this is from an auto if I actually min maxed it and did a proper run probably hit like 210, 220 million and this is just with a Lunera lot and hex is only A2 so we'll dive into his awakenings now but you can see that Hex is pretty much uh, what most of the top top dudes are running. You can see this guy, uh, Hex, A5, doing 311 million damage, and I think it has a max out Hex artifact, obviously. Uh, you're gonna see this one, Hex, A3, and 240 million, pretty decent. This one, 270 million on a A5 Hex with a maxed out uh, artifact. So. It's pretty obvious, Hex is a superb unit. I might consider getting him to A5 because I need a really strong unit in Samurai. And uh, Silas just doesn't cut it there. I have my Hex artifact at level 5 now, which is like one more level away from being maxed out. So it could come from my Mythic artifact accents, which is almost complete. The, the shards that have been forming from Samurai 2. Uh, so yeah, this bang of a unit, even in story mode or campaign or you know, uh, content like Void Rift, he's very very strong there because his cost is super low and as part of his skill kit there's this uh, Fate the Hermit which gives him invisibility and resists incoming damage every like you know 40 seconds which is really clutch in some moments that you know you're running him in Void Rift. So, if we take a look at uh, A1 here, during the effect of Mad Truth, there's a chance to draw the food. So, with his normal ultimate, uh, all his cuts become the Joker, which does 400% damage 3 times and inflicts burning for 5 seconds. The food does almost the same thing, it's 300% more damage, but there's an extra benefit which is 75% slow. This is huge for Hex because uh, Fate. Trial, each attack launch has a chance to inflict stun on the target for 2 seconds, but 
Not only that, it increases damage dealt to targets inflicted with CC effects by 60%. And lo and behold, uh, slow is actually considered one of the CC effects. And you know, um, that's the reason why his A1 is so freaking strong because it gives him a chance to, you know, do extra damage with his ultimate when he draws the food. A2 is flat attack, always great for a unit like Hex, which has pretty low base attack at about 3.9k if I'm not wrong. A3 is the other game changer during the effect of Mad Truth. Performing basic attacks attack against targets inflicted with burning extends the effect of Mad Truth by one second. So bear in mind this is basic attack, it's not his like cut through. So he does four basic attack every time. So you are bound to extend his ultimate, uh, you know, with A3 for sure. And Mad Truth already lasts for 35 seconds. With A3, it's going to go up to 65 seconds, which means that in both Guild Boss 1 and Samra, you're going to pretty much have like a permanent ultimate going on when you have Hex at A3, which is something that I'm really hoping to go for, given that, you know, I already have him at A2. And I have quite a bit of resources, so... I'll say that, uh, you know, if your hex is A0, if you don't have a hex, go for A0. If you have a hex, go for A1. Uh, if you have it at A1 or A2, go for A3. And then, you know, obviously A4 is going to be great as well. That's penetration. And A5 really changes things because Card of Fate, which is his talent, as you can see right here. So instead of having to draw 4 card of fates, which means 4 attacks, at A5 what he actually does is that every time he throws up that the fool or the joker card, it becomes 3 card throws instead. So instead of having 4 card throw every, every 4 card throws where you actually do one of the big damage items, you're gonna do it in every 3 card throws and he also in just straight up increases the damage that he deals with his ultimate by 30%. So every single Hex Awakening is great. It's one of the rare heroes where, you know, uh, no matter what Awakening you have him on, you want to get extra copies of him. Especially so if, you know, you're really looking to uh, do really well in Guild Boss, whether is it 1 or 2. I've seen people do Hex A5 alone without any Lords. Uh, A5 but with the Hex exclusive of course so every single one of his awakenings are good and if you don't have Fursi this is an even better banner to go on my only fear going on this banner is probably getting more Fursi than Hexes um, I think one copy of him will be great but if I do get lucky with just my divines and get like two copies of him I will try going on the rest to you know get that fifth copy and just get him A5 right away so that's the normal uh, 15x banner that we got going on. The other one is the Valderon uh, Emerald Claw banner. Emerald Claw, not a great unit. Uh, I've seen him doing decent in, you know, single target stuff like Guild Boss and all that. In AoE content, not so much because he has that talent where he pulls units towards him. And he's a chaotic unit. He decreases his HP quite a bit with one of his passives, this one. So every attack launch reduces 5% of current HP, which means that pulling units towards him just basically kills himself. So not great in terms of character design, which is why he sort of became a decent unit for, you know, content such as uh, Guild Boss 1. Reason being that he does decent damage and he's from the Chaotic and Nightmare faction, but yeah. Beyond that, you don't really see places where you really want him, uh, but he is not the lot here, he is the normal unit, so I won't talk too much about it. If you do want to go for Valderon, he's a solid single target unit. Uh, people use him in Samrath as well, he does pretty decent damage, uh, but he does need some good awakenings to get going. So we'll take a look at his awakenings. A1, when deployed, gains one stack of chaotic vitality, and during that period, ultimate becomes unavailable. So this just means that once he goes into his ultimate, he actually gains uh, this buff where you know increases his attack by 25%, crit damage by 25, and he loses 10% of his current HP per second. 
So it just puts him on very low HP, which is really great because it's a Chaos unit after all. And in single target arena specifically, this is very important. Because when you start placing him down, you can see here from his ultimate, Rage Cap is at 900 max level, initial Rage of 600. He's not going to get his ultimate off right away. Units like Valeria, Paradis, uh, even like um, Lugaru, they're going to get their ultimates off real quick. And Valderon loses out if he doesn't have this Chaotic Vitality going on. And uh, if you take a look at Arena as well, if you see units like you know Adeya, they don't really do that well in the first few rounds. Reason being that they don't get ultimates off quickly. So Valdoron needs at the very bare minimum A1 to actually get going. So if you only have one copy of him and you are Mega Will, it might be worthwhile to go for him. But I'll say that with the rerun banners that they're doing, there's a good chance that they're going to rerun Praetors or Ingrid uh, somehow, maybe, I'm not sure. So maybe it's worthwhile saving for that because Valderon is also quite niche. You use him in single target arena. Uh, AoE arena, not that much because his range is too short. Uh, Samra as well, but Praetors is really who we're going to be aiming for. And A2, that just gives him extra flat attack and also overall team faction damage. So pretty standard awakening. But A3 of his, uh, that's where the money is at. So it's the same thing, Chaotic Vitality. But this time around, his attack ignores 50% of the target's defense. So it's like Silas ultimate by half instead. And given that he's a Chaotic unit and the amount of damage he gets, this Valdoran hits pretty hard. So if you want to do well with him in single target arena, you would need him to be at A3 minimally. So myself, I run a team which consists of uh, right here. So Gun, Adea, Lugaru, Valeria. All three of them do really good damage, but they don't do better than A3 Valderon that is geared well. Reason being that I have Valeria, she slows me down, so Valderon is really what we need here. But uh, A3, pretty far away, so... Well, not near PD as well. But I'll say that the Valdron banner is really depending on where you are. If you're a collector, you don't have him yet. Probably worthwhile to summon on it, but uh, I wouldn't go too hard on it because the new Nightmare Lord is probably coming in a few months. So that's probably what I want to save at because judging from all the ancient exclusive lots that have been releasing, they've all been pretty strong. Just take a look at Eova, Ingrid. Uh, these two units were new, uh, or rather the newest units that we had from the Ancient Banners, and they're pretty nuts. So that's my take. Uh, the normal rare, rare summon banners, it's probably a go for most people. You want Awakenings on Hex, you want even your first copy of him, and yeah, every single one of his Awakenings are great, so no reason to pass up on him. And if you don't have first see even better, you should definitely summon on it, because He's going to be a staple for Guild Boss 2. Some people might say that you can use Alien instead, but Alien doesn't have inspiration. So uh, she does lose, it out, lose out in that aspect because there are downtime on your ultimates. And if you're running a Nightmare Calm, high chance you're using Arrogance. Arrogance does his ultimate as and when as he does because it's an auto ultimate. So first he sort of substitutes constants there when, you know, uh, Arrogance does his ultimate and Constance is down, you can use Percy for inspiration instead. And the ultimate of his comes in really clutch when it comes to uh, some of the phases, such as when the first stack of poison lands, as well as when the earth shatters happen, you can actually use Percy to block out the damage there. So yeah, that's gonna be it for the video on should you summon for the banner that's gonna take place tomorrow. Let me know now in the comment section if you do have any more questions and good luck on your summons and I'll see you in the next